Hey, today we are going to do a watercolor. This is a dot art watercolor and um, it is fairly basic. You're going to need um, some paper. If you have watercolor paper, that works best, but you can also use um, any kind of thick art paper. You're going to need a cup of water, um, watercolors, and a brush. And if you could find some things that are circular, varying in sizes like quarter, um, a cup, anything that will give you um, anywhere from three to six different size circles. And you're going to need a pencil, right? The first thing you're going to want to do is collect um, some items that are circles um, that you can trace. And they should be different sizes, um, varying from you know a couple large to a few small. Um, and then you, I'm going to start with my largest one. I'm just taking the lid to a, one of my kids' sippy cups. And you're going to lightly trace and I mean lightly a couple around your paper. The more um, different size circles you can get the um, more interesting it's going to look. And you're going to want to overlap some of them so that there is some space uh, that is overlapping. Think of a uh, Venn diagram. And I'm just going from like, my largest down to my smaller circles. And I'm not going to want to do too many of any of them. Like, uh, I'm using like six different sizes. So I'm not going to make more than, than four of any size. This will just make your picture more interesting. I'm just going to place them around my picture. Lids work great. Uh, coins. Mm -hmm. 
and you're going to want to leave some of the space open. You're not going to want to overlap more than uh, three. See how those three um, overlap right here? Adding any more to that would just um, make the color really muddled and we don't want that. Put this here. Maybe one more right here. Alright. Um, next, you're going to get out uh, a cup of water and your watercolors. You're also going to probably want like a paper towel or a napkin or something you can dab your brush on if it gets too much water on it, all right? One thing I like to do before I get started um, on my painting is I like to take an eraser and even though I did all of my circles um, very lightly, because I don't want a lot of the pencil marks to show, I'm just gonna take my eraser and I am not going to erase it completely, but I'm just going to rub it over the top of my paper. That way I can still see where the circles are, but I'm not going to get a lot of the pencil left on my paper. See how you can still see where my circles are, but um, a lot of the actual pencil has been erased. So if you like, you can um, do that before we start painting. As we get started, um, as I've said before, you're going to need some clean um, water in a cup and uh, you're going to need a brush. I like to pick a, a nice flat brush, um, not one that's too small because that's going to leave a lot of lines. Um, you're going to want one that's big enough to cover your larger circles. And a good rule um, that I try to follow when doing this is to start with my lightest color, which is going to be yellow and then work my way to my darkest, uh, which is going to be purple. Now you want to use enough water that uh, it's going to move across your paper easily. You don't ever want to see the little brush marks. That means uh, you don't have enough water but you don't want to use too much water that it's going to drip all over your paper. So I like to add a little bit of water to my color first, and then I'm going to select a circle. And I'm going to carefully go around it with my brush and if the color is too dark I can always add a little bit more water if it's too light then I'm going to want to add more paint And if my brush ever gets too wet, I take a paper towel and then I just dab it on there. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do some more in yellow. And I'm gonna try and not do any of the same size. And I'm gonna try and spread out where 
each color is going to be. So I'm going to pick one of these really small little quarter sized ones. And then I think I'm going to do uh, a really large one yellow over here on this side. It's just going to make your picture more um, visually interesting. If you do all of the same color right next to each other, or you do all of the small ones the same color. It's just not going to be as interesting to look at. Now depending on how many circles you have, uh, you still are going to have five more colors to do. So you're going to want to leave enough for those other colors to have three to four circles each. So I'm going to uh, just do one more in yellow. And I'm gonna pick one of these over here. Then when you're all done with a color, you're going to Really clean out your brush, dab it on your paper towel, make sure that all of the color is gone. Next, I'm going to move on to orange, making sure I have enough water. I'm just going to kind of push the paint around my circle. Then I'm going to do the same thing on another one that is different size. I'm going to be really careful when I'm getting close to my yellow because my yellow is still pretty wet. I don't want to just run my brush through the yellow because it might pull some of that color away. So I'm going to try and keep all of my orange together and then I'm going to go over that part of the circle. Now, if you're getting a lot of color bleeding because you have a lot of water on it, um, you might want to just wait in between colors, giving it a chance to dry. And if you ever get too much water on your picture, you can also take your paper towel and you can just dab it. Now I'm going to thoroughly wash out my brush and I'm going to move on to, um, I'm going to go with green. Green shows up fairly light. Now you don't need fancy watercolors to do this. You can just do this with, you know, your regular Crayola watercolor set or whatever you have. It actually looks better if you just use the basic colors, your primary and your secondary color. Now I'm looking at my green and I want it to be just 
slightly darker. So I'm going to add more paint and less water. Now I'm going to go to red. So we're starting to get into the darker colors, so just be careful. I'm going to do a red down here. And I'm going to move on to my blue. And then finally, I'm going to do purple. Okay, hey, now that I have my circles all finished, I'm going to um, do some splatter where I take my finger after putting um, some paint on my brush and I'm just gonna flick it And then I'm going to take my next color and do the same thing. 
kind of get it all around. You want to make sure that if you're doing any splatter, you um, don't want to get any on your table. You have something uh, down. It's a controlled splatter, not crazy splatter. I'm just going through my colors. This is the fun part. Most kids think it's fun. I got my green. If you get any really big drips, you can just take your towel if you want, or you can just leave it there. And there you have it. When it is nice and dry, you can sign it and you're done. All right, I hope you enjoyed this uh, painting tutorial today and I will see you next time.